Sure. All right, sorry, sorry for the late start. We had just a couple of technical um, glitches, but hey. everything is, is yeah. working. We're good. Um, but it's, this is a real uh, pleasure for me. Um, um, just real quick, I'm Jared Gardner. I work at Ohio State and um, collaborate with the good folks at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum. And I have been um, a huge fan of 2D Cloud's work. Um, I can't say from the very beginning, because um, I discovered them uh, a few years, uh, about two or three years in uh, to the um, history of the press. But I discovered them at just the right time when I really was starting to hit a period of self-doubt about my commitment to comics, wondering if I was running out of steam as a reader and a, and a critic, um, wondering if I had anything new to say about comics. And then I started picking up 2D Cloud books, and they left me speechless, which was the best thing. Um, I didn't have any easy answers or descriptions for the feelings they were inspiring in me. Um, I was having um, complicated responses that developed over time and were difficult to translate. And I felt that great feeling uh, that kind of drew me to comics in the first place all those years ago, the feeling of wanting to understand what makes these stories, these images have the kinds of effects they do. And as an old professor type, being forced to relearn everything is the best thing in the world. And so for that, I am I'm grateful to, to all you guys and, uh, and to Wayne Hogan in particular, who is the uh, co-founder and um, chief wizard of uh, 2D Cloud today. So let me just um, quickly um, introduce uh, our panelists and we'll, we'll talk to them each in turn and I, I'll begin with a, just a couple of questions about the past um, to Rain. Um, and, but he said in particular, and I, I was totally not surprised when he said it, he said, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the past. I know it's a 10 year anniversary, blah, 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 but I want to talk about the present and the future which for anybody who reads these books, that makes a lot of sense. But I said, tough. <laughs> I, I have to do what Rob told me. Rob told me we're going we're gonna to at least take a moment for the anniversary, because it is a remarkable accomplishment in this day and age. And for a press that is doing experimental and work that is pushing the borders of what comics are and can be, um, to be doing this for 10 years is worth pausing over and celebrating. Um, so closest to terrific uh, books that have come out in the last uh, few years from this press and uh, all the books that are before us today. Uh, next we have uh, Laura Lannis, um, whose new book really, I think, just came out, right? Um, like two, like... Yeah, a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago. finished uh, binding. Yeah. Got it back from the bindery, I think. And, and we'll talk, it's, it's a gorgeous book, Spiral Bound and, and uh, Long Form uh, Diary Comics um, that, not surprisingly, don't look exactly like uh, maybe all of the diary comics that you've read uh, up, up till now. Um, and uh, next we have Sarah Farrick. Uh, uh, Mar Margo. Margo Farrick, sorry. Uh, Margo Farrick, um, who is, um, whose work we're going to have um, I think a lot of fun talking about. There's some just exciting stuff collected in uh, the collection that we'll talk about today. And finally, Fifi Martinez, your book also just came out really recently, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think has um, communicates in a lot of interesting ways with the stuff that Gia is doing as well. So I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about that. Um, and I'm sorry I have to stand here at the pulpit. It seems to be the SPX way. Um, so let me just start real quickly by Wayne asking you to just talk a little bit about, uh, for those in the room who are maybe new to the press, about 
how you came to do this. We have two 10-year anniversaries of SPX and so you have two very different presses with very different stories, very different um, things that got you guys started in publishing. Um, my, my sense of the history for you guys is it kind of began with an um, attempt to put together an anthology comic that became a, an addiction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, like we, we started, uh, Maggie, Umber, and I, like, uh, uh, who I've known, like, we've known each other for, like, 19 years. Um, and it, this has always been something that I, like, wanted to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would not have been able to do it with, uh, without her. But, um, uh, yeah, we were, like, both working on, like, some comics for, like, some anthology, and she was like, why don't we just do this for us? And uh, that seemed to, like, make a lot of sense. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just kept doing it, and eventually we uh, started putting out, like, minis by friends. And we were always trying to get, like, uh, like, uh, uh, Maggie and I met at uh, an arts high school uh, in Minnesota, and it had uh, uh, students from all over Minnesota. Had like a dormitory. It was like a public school, um, but it was like very small. And uh, so we just tried to get uh, yeah friends to contribute to this weird anthology. And then some people that we didn't know uh, started uh, sending in stuff. Um, but I think like with, with anything, it takes like some time to kind of develop your voice and. Uh, uh, just either as an artist or as a publisher or whatever, and it, it, uh, it took us some time to kind of figure out what, what we're doing with it. But yeah. and and it, that kind of spirit of bringing your friends together to make anthologies is you know that kind of oldest zine spirit in in the world. But then eventually, you guys, I mean, remarkably quickly, kind of began expanding from just um, doing a, a, some anthologies and a few zines to suddenly getting super ambitious. And I think that was kind of, it was a little before this when I first started following you guys regularly, I think around 2010, and then suddenly you had tons of stuff. What happened in 2012 to make you guys go nuts and suddenly really expand the operation so dramatically? Uh, I guess, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it just uh, ambition or drive or mania or something. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I'm bipolar, uh, and uh, that's like uh, I just uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I guess I have, have something I'm trying to do, and like uh, um, I think before that, like uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I, I also stopped like making my own stuff too. Maybe that like helped or something. And around that time. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I don't know. I think, but I think, I think like, because uh, yeah, what, so you said 2010? Well, and, and it was, yeah, it was, it was, well, by 2012, I think you went up from like four or five titles a year to like 14 or something. Oh, like uh, well, that. That, I mean, th uh, that was actually the, like 2000, uh, maybe 14 or 15. Uh, that was when we started like heating up. So that was right. like when, once we like hooked up with the distributor, um, uh, and, and in the lead up to that, like we started uh, putting out more titles a year. Uh, like our goal was kind of to have like 12 books of the spine a year, but still to continue doing minis, and then like uh, to start doing to have like a uh, uh, quarterly uh, magazine, and um, uh, yeah, it's kind of unrelenting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like our uh, uh, our next season of books is going to be like ten minis to celebrate uh, ten years of oh, Katie Cloud. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been it's been you guys have been very steady really since over the course of these years, and it was around what year was it you guys started doing the kind of collections? Was was it? Yeah, that was t like two thousand. 15, Fifteen. That's what yeah, I kind of yeah. thought. That was when I kind of. I think it was. This was the one where I first realized, hey, this is, this is some heavily curated. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, connections between these works, all of which had to do with sex and sexuality in different ways, really different approaches, but they were sharing some common themes, even as each book had a very different feel. And, and that was something different. Like I think for even for those of us who've been reading for a while, to kind of 
the, the model of the season. And you also, was that when you also began Kickstarter? No, that was actually before. Like, there was, like, so much, like, pushback uh, against using Kickstarter as a platform, like, uh, publicly, uh, like, in, in this small community, right. uh, which was, like, really stupid. Um, yeah. And then, like, uh, uh, like uh, another person on our team at the time um, uh, was uh, really against it, too. And, uh, but he, I don't know. So we eventually, like, uh, uh, just started doing it because it, it's like, it costs, like, so much money. Like, I, I think we got, like, 60000 in debt or something, like, just getting to that point. It's, and it's not like I have uh, access to money. <laughs> so right. It's like just credit <laughs> yeah. cards. Right. Um, and, uh, uh, and you realize that model is not sustainable. No, and it's, and it's also sustainable. just like it just like pushes you so far right. and it's like this is like so fucking stupid. Like, uh, um, and I, I think like Kickstarter is like, a really great platform. It just, it turns it into like this like social uh, uh, enterprise where because you're, you're, I mean you have to talk about it. To, uh, it like forces you to, t to sell it forces you to like do your job. Well, like, it also gives you a chance to kind of think about how the books might come together and speak to each other and yeah, setting mean, up little micro communities that, I mean, that's as a reader, as a fan, that's yeah. what I've really come to enjoy is kind of looking forward to like, okay, what is, I mean, I like curation, I like doing museum work, and I like watching books be curated, and that's kind of what you guys have been doing. I, and I think it's, it's it's an interesting model. The resistance to kickstarting is is a weird one. Do you, I mean do any of you guys like what do you guys feel? I mean for the rest of you, do you have a you guys are are younger than certainly than old man me, but even than than not as old man Wayne here. What's your, what, is, what does your generation think about this stuff? Like does kickstarting wig you out or feel Bad, like a, somehow a violation of what's true, I and mean, I don't, I don't get the resistance to it. So I was wondering if you guys have a feeling for why people sometimes are squirrely about it. Uh, I mean, I think the the resistance to it is like I, I don't have like a moral like uh, opposition to it. I just, <laughs> um, I mean, I think I think it could be really good. I think it's just like uh, it requires like so much effort and. Uh, it's kind of just like revving up for this like big event and like having to do that lots of times in a row. Uh, a month. Yeah, for, right. like month after month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like uh, hard, and it's it's also like uh, that. I understand. Yeah, and for me, like I, I personally, I'm not good at promotion right. or like like of myself or other people. So um, that that would be my resistance to it. But I mean, it, if it works, I mean. Yeah, and that's yeah. I mean that's one of the things I was thinking about, right? Is that having somebody like a publisher for those people who aren't good at self promotion, who's willing to you know do some of the heavy lifting of promotion, is, yeah. is a help because otherwise yeah. there's so much falls on the individual creator to yeah to do that. It's it's a lot to ask of people because I feel like a lot of like comics artists, especially, are. Uh, you know, like you spend a lot of time alone <laughs> yeah. working on your stuff. Um, I think there's like a lot of people who are like making comics that are geared more towards like uh, isolation and like not like uh, promoting themselves yeah. or reaching out. So yeah, it's it is the it is a very solitary art form, yeah. and then to have to do things like social media and crowdsourcing. Those two words, social and crowd, are not often comics people's favorite no. words. <laughs> no. So it's, but it's, but it's worked. I mean, it's an all or nothing approach you guys have taken that, you know, you kind of set up a, a, a model on a platform that is all or nothing, and you've made it work now time and time again. Is it? Rain, is it exhausting, or is it feeling like you've got this down now? It feels like dying. Like, <laughs> but doesn't get easier? What? It doesn't get easier? No, I mean, like, it's funny, because, like, every time we, like, make our goal, like, I just don't feel anything. Like, I just, like, am like, I, it's, I have no relief. Like, I just, like, think about, like, the next one, <laughs> and, like, uh, everything else I have to do, and everything I'm behind on. You're pretty down, man. Yeah. <laughs> But also, it, it gives me, a, uh, it's the only uh, reason to live, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, like, I, 
this. I love this. Like this, yeah. just like uh, it feels like so purposeful, and uh, uh, just being able to like uh, uh, put uh, uh, everything in. <laughs> it's. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I I love it. It's it's uh, it's totally worth it for me. Yeah, and it's become something that I can tell you for for your the the fans of Two D Cloud who are now willing to follow you guys anywhere. Um, it's something to look forward to seeing what's coming up next, um, and it gives us a chance to feel involved with the with the the process ahead of time, so we have, we know what we're looking forward to. Here's just for those of you guys who um, don't. Uh, haven't developed the Kickstarter 2D cloud addiction yet. This is kind of what the, the, the groupings look like as they're promoted for the upcoming uh, seasons. And, um, and you can, in, in a variety of ways, um, these books do find ways to talk to each other, not always in ways that are as immediately obvious maybe as that grouping from 2014 that was, I mean, 15, that was kind of explicitly about uh, sex. Um, sometimes it's uh, the conversations are more elliptical and complicated, but um, but always interesting and exciting. Um, and then just like, one thing I also wanted to talk about just briefly is um, the old comics uh, zine that you guys have also been doing on a pretty much quarterly basis yeah, now. Yeah. Um, I just, like I was when you guys started doing it, I was like, why are you adding that to you? I mean, again, I'm always sitting there, you know, in Columbus, Ohio, offering editorial advice, yeah. you know, in my room to myself. Um, and I'm like, why are you adding to I mean it's a great thing, but this I know how much work putting something like that together is with text and interviews and, and the layouts work and and it's awesome. And what's the what kind of was the inspiration for starting alt comics? Uh I'd say that the, this space, like right now, like as an industry, is not sustainable. Like no one's like making, like very few people are making a living uh, doing this work, yeah. and like that's like we're trying to change that. Like, uh, um, and I think it takes like so many different components to like change that. I think like by having like a magazine, by like working on a documentary, by having like a different kind of like comics criticism site that like approaches things differently, uh, uh, having more events, and like there's just like. This is absolutely a pop medium, but it's like no one like there's there's like so many people that are like not really uh, uh, tr uh, treating this like as uh, something that's a possibility where you could actually make a living doing the things that you love. And so this is it's just like a piece, a of piece that. of yeah. a larger kind of ecosystem yeah. that you guys are trying to imagine bring into being that can also serve as a model for totally. for others. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I was, like, reading this uh, uh, interview with some fashion designers uh, in the fader. Uh, they designed, like, the uh, White Castle uniform recently, and, like, uh, uh, and then I started reading the Wikipedia article about White Castle, and I was just, like... Which is headquartered in Columbus, Ohio? Sorry, I just had ah, to... Awesome, to, to awesome. There. Okay. Uh, and it was just, like, really interesting, because, like, uh, they had to create their own, like, distribution network, and they, like, created... Uh, like, they had, like, their own, like, factory that produced hats, like, paper hats that they wear but it's like with anything like where you're like really transforming a space like um, you have to like do all of these like little steps to like help build the infrastructure to like make this possible and I think like uh, yeah yeah it's just like the magazine is just a small piece of that and everything that we do is like towards that goal that's like what I'm trying to do <laughs> that's I mean and then to make things even more ambitious and exciting is the development of an annual anthology um, that you guys just started up a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, the yeah. second just came out yeah. um, last this spring, um, and um, this is uh, this is a really exciting project. Can you just say a little bit about it? And I know Laura was in uh, Mirror Mirror Two as well, yeah. so we can. Yeah, that was like the first time I saw her work. I was just like fucking blown away. Yeah, but, me too. Um, yeah, yeah, it like opens up the books so amazingly. Yeah, um, yeah I guess, so it's, it's uh, uh, that's like another thing that we're trying to do, like it's our uh, flagship anthology. Each uh, edition gets its own editor um, and they get their own approach to how they do it. Like Blaze edited the first one. And Marco, you were in the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the second one is uh, Shanti Collins and Julie Graffair. 
Um, so not exactly the same editorial sensibilities oh, there? Oh, no. <laughs> like, but I mean, I think that's what like, that's makes awesome. it so yeah. exciting. And like, we also give like a lot of creative control uh, to them to like do what they, to make it, I mean, that's the same thing like we approach like all, all of our books. I mean, yeah. like there's always like feedback and stuff, um, but they, they're the ones that have like the power and say and all that. It was it right around then, just real quickly before we kind of turn to talking um, about the present and the future, was it right around then when, when Blaze started working with you? Uh, 20, uh, I mean, we've, we did a mini with him in 2014. I think we right. started talking in 2013. When did you do three books? Uh, that was 24, that 2015. 2015, 2015. okay, yeah, and that's... Yeah. Um, and, and he's done a lot of design work also, right? Oh, if you guys, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and, I, and that really, I mean, that collaboration seems like it's been a, a productive one. Yeah, yeah. Well. I mean, we, we work with a lot of different artists, like uh, uh, doing like design or yeah. like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, uh, this is like definitely not a single person entity. It's like right. everyone. Yeah, one of the things when I talk to you, you're like, you, you you want me to know who the printers are, who's doing the riso printing, who's, yeah. I mean, you're, that kind of sense of it as being a, a kind of larger collaborative effort is, comes through when, whenever, you know, I see you talk about the work and, um, and that's, I mean, that's a, that's a lovely thing. I mean, just a, the kind of appreciation for the craftsmanship that happens on all levels of making these, these books come alive. Um, as I as I had with the uh, image from Mirror Mirror One, um, that was edited by Blaze Laramie. There's uh, that was where where I first saw your work, Marco, um, and of course part of a, a kind of ongoing ongoing projects, uh, a lot of which is all now collected in uh, this remarkable uh, book um, that came out. That, that came out in the spring, is that right, uh. or summer? I'm actually not sure when the official debut date was. Yeah, I know, it gets kind of, um, I think it might have been... The official debut was when I got it, so like, when, when was that? When did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's, and this is collecting s some shorter works. As, yeah, as well. yeah. Um, yeah, the... I think maybe, like, two-thirds of it is uh, comprised of, like, zines that I had right. published, like, going back two years ago. And um, yeah, there's the, the last story in it is specifically made for the book, but yeah, it's a lot of little. And it all guys. feels, but it all feels of a piece. I mean, it feels like you, it was a, a, like a series of love letters that you were kind of composing towards a larger whole. Is that? That's my feeling that I've my inarticulate feeling that I get as I'm. I just always really moved by your, your, the way in which the, the words and the images and the shapes oh, dance you. across your pages. And there's a coherent flow, even though I know this work, some of it was developed over the course of several years. Did you kind of know, did you, did you have a vision of the whole as you were working on it over that time? Uh, not, not really. Um, I just started making them. I think they might have like a compatible tone with each other because yeah. they were honestly made as love letters like that was my my main reason for yeah. making them and that was like the drive so like uh i think that kind of gave each of them this like kind of like single-minded desperation that i think worked out mm -hmm. um yeah but uh, I, I don't think i started thinking of it as like a, a whole piece until probably like uh until i had made maybe like half of it you know and at that point, you could kind of see the... Yeah, it seemed like it could work out. <laughs> There's, I mean, they're, they're love letters, and they're beautiful love letters. There's also, a, I used to have a desperation, a, a, a kind of pain and sadness that runs. Yeah, they're all unrequited. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean... There's, I mean, one of the feelings I'll just say that I get from, I get from a lot of, I get from your work, and, and to some degree, from all four of my work that I've been reading is, uh, like, oh yeah, right, this love stuff really sucks. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, and yet, you know, we can't stop doing it, but man, is it hard. Um, 
which of course, you know, we know, but we want to forget. And, um, you know, it's, it's really present and really palpable. I mean, palpable is a word that I think it feels right for describing all of your work because it's all very, it ha all of it has, um, in very different ways, a very physical, tangible, textural feel. And one of the things I often have when I pick up um, a lot of a recent work by 2D Cloud and, and all of yours is a, a, I feel, I open the book with a certain degree of caution because I know I'm going to be bombarded with something strong. And I often walk away, as I said at the start, with feelings that I'm like not ready to begin to talk about. But also with, I feel like, I, is, is this comic on my hands now? <laughs> because there's something so textural and and physical about it. I mean, and yours, look, and I, I don't have obviously a, a lot of pages to show here, but I hope everybody gets a copy, has, I mean, textures are, are dancing everywhere. Do you have a, <laughs> <laughs> what was your, did you have a kind of thought for how you wanted to see this printed in the world in terms of bringing that materiality, that, that texture into the book, making it feel like it might literally come off on your body as you read it? Uh, I mean, in terms of like printing, I actually really don't know anything about printing. I, I kind of just, uh, uh, like all of my my comics, and I, this is something I want to change, but uh, I kind of just make it the way I want it to look like in real life, which right. is... Uh, like I just use like whatever like colored pencil or like crayon that will like achieve that effect, but I haven't really learned that you know how to um, translate that into printed work yet. And I think it's actually really hard to like make that work with uh, scans or like photos right. of things. Um, yeah, so it's kind of weird for me like looking at my own book because uh, I know what the originals look like and. Uh, they, it just looks different, so I, I feel when I look at it, I feel kind of like dissociated, just because I know what it's supposed to look like in real life. In, in, um, in terms of color, or in terms of just of, everything, of like everything. maybe color, like especially, yeah. but um, yeah, maybe like the way the light hits on it, because it's like yeah. a uniform surface, right. I guess. Maybe next time you'll just need to draw every copy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful stuff. And um, I mean, I, part of what I wanted to, you know, maybe here's another page from um, one of the um, pieces also originally um, published as a separate zine by 2D Cloud. Um, and it's hard to, for me to imagine the original having uh, more texture and dimension than the printed, so I'm desperate now to see the original because um, it's really um, striking uh, pages here in terms of their their depth and their and their texture. And it's when I was the the other mirror mirror story that's represented by an artist here is, as I mentioned before, Laura Lannis's story uh, that opens up, or, or uh, I think right after a, a very short single page story, is the first long story in the collection um, that is um, a romantic love story called Love, um, and a really dark um, uh, story of. Um, power and sexual obsession and, and violence and it's really as as Rain said it blew me away when I read it the first time and kind of set the tone for the whole book to follow. Um, Laura, can you say a little bit about this remarkable dark story and how you came up with it? Um, yeah, uh, it's me. It's about me. I don't know. I'm both. I'm both of them. Both, both, the both of the women in this. Um, yeah. I don't know. I am. Um, the only I. I hope it's okay to spoil. I mean, I, the only yeah. thing I definitely wanted to put in the story, I just worked it in, was um. Uh, there, there's a dick that gets cut off. That was the only part that I was like, this should go in at some point. Um, but other than that, I was just, um... So you kind of sat down and you're like, okay, 
got to have a, a dismembered deck. I just, and just um, from there. I had I had a lot of conversations with Julia Gaffer, who was one of the editors, yeah. and um, Celine Loop, who's also in the book. I've had like two or three conversations with them about like dicks being cut off and how that should happen more. And I thought, okay, they're definitely gonna do that. So I wanna I wanna do that too. Um, but yeah, that was the only part that I was sure from the beginning. But other than that, I was just um, working on different things. And my story was super late because I'm an absolute disaster with deadlines. I just reworked it several times until I liked it. I'm almost sure I was the last person in the book. They told me the deadline was m March, and I sent the story in September. I bet you weren't the last. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> St. Brains confirmed it. It's, <laughs> It's it's a it's a common a common issue. And I, I love the the textures and, and lines you use. What's the are you what are you using there for the for the black negative space? Is that um, that's gouache. I um, could never figure out how people do ink with brush. I still don't understand. It's so difficult. Gouache is easier. It's it's very thick. You know. Um, and I like the textures yeah. too. I use shitty paper on purpose because I, I like how the paper creates those textures. And those uneven kind of lighting, yeah, yeah it comes through. Really, it's, it works beautifully in this in this story, which is 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 dark, but it's not somehow it it, it is also exciting and and it probably shouldn't be, but it's also kind of inspiring in some strange ways. Maybe it's just because, as you said, we need more dismembered dicks and, and stories. And, and this is, a, this is a, a masterpiece of the form. There's uh, the denouement I won't spoil anymore, except I just love these, some of these final grid panels. There's the second to last um, page, I believe, of the, of the book. Um, and a lot of the end of it is, is wordless. It, requires the reader to go back and, and fill it in. And then um, I didn't have a chance to put up images from it because I, I ha didn't have a copy yet, but grabbed one as, as soon as I could this morning um, from your collection of diary comics that just came out. And I had I had not seen them. I got, got you published them online, but I hadn't seen them earlier. And um, I read them all this morning and was really just, it was fabulous stuff. I love, it's a form I, fi I follow closely and can't really think of anything quite like it. Um, sometimes diary comics can be kind of wry and fey and melancholy and you were exploring a whole bunch of other set of emotions and experiences here. Did you have a sense of what you wanted to do different with this diary comics form? Um, no, I just, I usually do diary comics and I'm kind of depressed and have the time and um, uh, both things were true back in February when I did this um, uh, yeah I don't know I just I kind of had the extra time I do freelance illustration I wasn't getting a lot of work uh, so I thought I could do like these are like 12 panels because that was a paper I had so I thought I can do like one a day and I had just started seeing someone who had a girlfriend and I thought right. that that some drama is gonna happen. You had a feeling, uh, so you knew that. You yeah, could, right. I said this is gonna turn south real soon. Right. Um, so I started doing the comics then. And and if I remember correctly, he he kind of knew that he was gonna be in the comics too. It, yes. He knew that was kind of part of the deal, as I think he. Yes, he I said. would never do comics without someone's consent. Especially with the shit I put in the comics. Yeah, no, no, but one of one of your one of your subjects with whom you travel is didn't want his face used, so you, you made him a dog, which I just yeah. I loved it, and um, and just like okay, I'm not gonna put your face. You're a dog, um, and it, it it's yeah, I, I recommend it very highly. It's um, also the what is the dimension of that page? Is it like an it's not a four? Is it like an of the, um, so I drew them. I just had like this this paper left like leftovers. So I drew them at ten by sixteen. I didn't think this was going anywhere. Um, and then when I was like halfway through it, uh, Rain contacted me, 
and asked if I wanted to um, put them out. That's great. Um, and the, why the spiral binding? Because the paper size is so awkward that um, this was the best. Because this is Rizzo printed. Right. Um, so this is the largest size they could Rizzo print. You know, if it was smaller, they could print it and then like fold it and we could bind it normally. But because it's at the largest Rizzo size, this was the only way to do it. So like, is that yeah, yeah. correct? Like, uh, I mean, I suppose we could have done something else, like staple did, and then just had the, but I don't know, spiral. I like it. Yeah, it yeah. feels yeah. like a like a I notebook. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 just terrific stuff, and. And kindling, Gina Gordon's uh, is also um, premiering here, um, and this is one of those books again. I where you just pick it up and you're like, okay, it's going to be a lot of complicated feelings um, and things I'm going to have to look for words for because you're. So, you know, you're working with a lot of things that you don't have a lot of script here, right? It's a it's a lot of um, a lot of images and textures and shapes and a lot of beautiful movement which aren't coming, you can't see the line as well, I think, at least on the screen as, as comes through on the pages. Can you talk a little bit about this book and kind of what your, your vision for the book is here? Um, sure. Uh, so Kindling um, was my attempt to like work through um, some feelings I was having about um, just like wondering why I was so okay with giving so much of myself to other people just like without a second thought right. um, so it started with just wanting to figure out a way to convey that in drawings um, and it was really hard like it was really hard for me to try to figure that out so I was like let me just draw in a way that's most comfortable to me um, just to get that out the way so I went with uh, I went with pastels because I just really love pastels yeah um, and so I tried to like I wanted this story to seem like a journey to finding that answer for myself, like an actual physical journey, and that's why the person is walking through the whole uh, zine. So, yeah. yeah and, and my feeling by the end is that, I mean, it's not as if everything is resolved or everything is answered, but that you have, you at least have a, a sense that the, the speaker, the central figure who is obviously as you describe it kind of standing in for yourself has maybe at least come to a new landscape from which they can better reflect on it is that the yeah. right sense yeah like, definitely like i i definitely didn't find an answer yeah. to my question making this um but i did sort of like exercise it from me i don't really think about this problem anymore so I guess that was a good enough solution. So put it into into a, into the past in a place where you can live with it or look back on it from another angle, yeah. and it's and I, that feeling of of, uh, of of journey and movement just runs through the the book. In fact, it's the when I picked it up, I found myself just kind of turning the pages faster and faster because I I wanted to follow that movement out and then I had to go back and start very slowly back through it. And that's an experience I have with a lot of um, a lot of books that, that you guys publish is that feeling of needing in all cases to go back and read, read in different paces and um, in order to begin to find my way through a landscape. You guys, I mean, and that these are not often books that are making life super easy on the reader but are also never ever try to keep the reader at arm's length. They're very generous works, they're very um, vulnerable works, but they're also not going to offer easy answers for the reader. So it's, it, but it's never from the position of, of talking down or keeping the reader away, but just saying to the reader, all right, you, you wanted to explore this with me, here we go. And, and 
you will get the same half answers that I'm working towards myself. And that's, that's hard stuff to do, but it's exciting. I think I had one more uh, two-page spread um, that kind of shows that, that movement and that walking of the figure across this, this landscape that is a motif that runs through the, the work as a whole. Um, and the textures really do, again, come through just beautifully. What's the, what, what was the printing for this one? What was uh, this was Rizzo printed by Rizzo, Perfectly yeah. Acceptable yeah, Press. Yeah, he did an amazing job. Really beautiful. They did an amazing job. Yeah, it's just, just lovely. Um, oh. And oh, and this is just something I was, I also wanted to, I kind of have, had seen online and, and I'm particularly interested in representations of of uh, mental illness and exploration. I just want to just ask you about this um, work and um, the, the, again, I love the, the textures here. Are you working with pastels there as well? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. And is there a, a kind of, is any kind of strong connection between the work you were doing in that early museum and, and what you're doing here? Yeah. Um a Cure for Madness was like the first official comic I ever made. Um, and again, it was just like getting the, for, like the formal, like how do I draw this in a way that's most comfortable thing out of the way, right. just to make it easier on myself. Um, so, and then I figured that that worked pretty well and I brought it in to Kenling. That's terrific. And then um, we have Fifi Martinez's um, museum, which is, uh, again, like a whole new set of, of uh, aesthetic uh, choices and, and energies, and, and couldn't be more different, and yet also feels like it's speaking as part of the same conversation. Uh, it's part of what I uh, kind of found so interesting reading through these ahead of the panel. Um, and a, a, a book that is, definitely um, raised some, some, pretty, some pretty tough issues. Um, can you talk a little bit about this book and, and what you were, you were exploring here? Yeah, um, so it felt like nothing, it's not really, like I didn't really intend to, I, I don't know, it's like a bunch of um, sketchbook pages mm -hmm. from, from the past year. Um, and uh, they're all kind of dealing with um, some of the things that happen um, when, when you go through a really bad breakup. Uh, that sounds like really basic, but um, yeah, I just, a lot of these pages are just exploring some of the different things that came up after like getting out of this really long-term relationship I was in for all of my 20s. Um, I never thought that I was going to do art or try to pursue being a cartoonist or anything, so once I got out of this relationship, I just, to deal with it, I just started drawing. Um, so like a lot of these pages are just dealing with like the weird feelings that come up after that separation, um, you know, like self-doubt, like not knowing what the self even is and uh, self-deprecation and weird crushes and, and the embarrassment that comes from like trying to navigate your way as like this person who's alone and um, trying to kind of like find intimacy and uh, any little spot they can get it, I guess. Yeah, that comes through. I mean, it's amazing that you, I mean, all of that you described is like what comes through so powerfully in the book, even though, as you said, it's presented to us in these kind of fragments that kind of often push away from each other. Like they're trying not to tell that story in a kind of traditional narrative sense, and yet the narrative comes through anyway. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, that's one of the, I mean, this is a question, you know, that I kind of have for, for all of you, but maybe, uh, Fifi, you could talk about it first, is um, a lot of these, a lot of the, the works um, uh, it, in, that I think in, in general I, I see uh, 2D Cloud making room for and, and that I see um, uh, many of you guys exploring is comics that are sometimes pushing against the edge of of even what we might think of comics as being. Um, 
Shina, I noticed you described yourself as a picture maker, I think, as from Brooklyn, um, not a cartoonist, uh, a sense of, you know, that somebody with a very narrow definition of what comics, what the definition of comics are, might open this up and say, I don't resist comics. And some people maybe even might, might feel they're being pushed against the definition of what narrative is. So you're, there's a kind of, a real kind of willingness and courage to push against some of those expectations that readers might win in terms of having their handheld with clear sequentiality or clear relationship between word and image, um, uh, even, you know, this happened and this happened. Um, and something that not every press is open to, um, but that obviously 2D Cloud has made a lot of space for. Um, and that's part of what I think makes, opens up a lot of new possibilities for comics. And, I, and when we were starting talking, you mentioned you hadn't even bought a proper works station yet. Like you weren't intending to be necessarily making comics until you had this need to tell this story. Yeah, well, I mean, I just never felt like I could um, because I'm not like, you know, an amazing artist or anything. But um, yeah, when I started like Have you getting, looked at that? Uh, what? Uh, no, really good. no. Um, <laughs> but like what I mean by that is like uh, like I don't know how to draw things yet and like there's some like when I started getting into like alternative comics and I like discovered 2D Cloud in 2015 I think that was the year that I had like started seeing some of the artists that they were publishing and I was looking at some of these books and thinking wow like that's that's crazy like how how unconventional everything was you know um, and then yeah like Wait, what was, what was the question? I lost the question. Well, I mean, I, mean, I probably had several questions at once. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I don't know. I just, I think it's it's really cool that you can, um, you don't necessarily have to have, like, a straightforward, like, linear progression in your comic. You can just, like, convey something, like, an emotion that, like, is connected that kind of, like, gives it that linear feeling. Mm -hmm. And let the reader kind of cross those, those boundaries. What about, I mean, particularly maybe for, for Zia and, and, and Margo, who also, I think, can push against some of those, you know, you don't often have a lot of clear grids or clear, obvious relationship between the word and image on every page. Um, kind of, you know, is there, for you, how invested are you, how much do you care about that kind of more traditional understanding of what comics you know, are according to some very rigid dictionary definitions, um, as opposed to your own desires to, as it kind of comes through in your work, um, not be bound by those kinds of expectations or, or limitations. Um, well, I'm, I'm actually trying to um, make like more comics-y looking comics right now. <laughs> I've been looking at like a lot more manga. So, I mean, I think that's, important um, I don't know it's funny because it's like I, I guess to me like my my work or like the the book yours like I don't think those are that weird or like I don't like I don't I don't think it's like that hard to like um, like I don't think there's that much distance between that and like a comic that maybe people would uh, think is more a comic or whatever but um, once, like, yeah, once people get past their maybe immediate question of yeah. where do I start on the page, then it becomes... I mean, yeah, if you just, like, okay. read it. It's like, right. And I mean, I, I feel like, like, a lot of uh, work, like, artwork in general is like that. Like, I mean, you just, it's, I, I don't know. It's like, I, I feel like sometimes people need to chill out a little <laughs> bit, because it's like, you can, you can just, you know, absorb anything, or like, you know, uh, I feel like everything is kind of, like, accessible, um, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I got my uh, my bachelor's in illustration and cartooning. So, you know, coming out of school, I was like, I need, like, the only thing that I can do is editorial illustration because that's what I, that's what I paid for. Right. Um, but then I started finding some comics that like. Uh, that weren't how I understood comics to be 
And so when I first started making them myself, I was just um, just trying everything because I could, because that's what comics right. seemed like they were to me. Like it was, there was like illustration, and then comics is where you can do whatever you want. You can do anything. Anything can happen in a comic, right? That's yeah. the, that's the only real definition of comics. Is, and and I, I mean that's I think part of what is so exciting is that there is there is absolutely no limitations and what maybe if there's one limitation is that it needs to be open and and inviting to the reader um and that's about it the reader then has to make the choice to meet it halfway and and like that comes through in all of your guys work as austin english actually in this gulag casual describes in the introduction he's collecting some of his early scenes being often feeling told by in various ways directly and indirectly that his he didn't draw correctly or he didn't um, make comics the way they were supposed to look and yet he had to make them anyway and I I love that that spirit uh, that gets celebrated I think in all of um, uh, in the kind of larger mission that it's not about rules or or aesthetic or other expectations uh, I'm just putting up a couple other images of some well, other terrific books um, in the spirit of celebrating the, the 10 years. Um, we, got a, we got a late start, but I think we should probably plan on wrapping it up in a few minutes to make room for the last panel. Um, and, you know, I was just kind of wondering if you guys um, had any kind of thoughts about, because you know, Rain makes, definitely said he wanted to talk about the future as well, about your own futures and, Rain, your thoughts about the future of of 2D Cloud, like what what do you guys have planned next? Margo, you said you're working on a project with maybe more comics-y looking comics right now. Uh, yeah, I, I, when I get back into making stories that I think um, have like characters in them, it's not just like, you know, my like right. monologue. Um, yeah, and hopefully, uh, yeah, I've just been trying to make stuff that looks more like comics just because I feel like I uh, I think I, I used to do that a long time ago and then I, I sort of like let go of it um, and there's a lot that I think I can do with that that I haven't really tried to do cool. and like more black and white or like more work that would uh, print better I guess the way you the way you intended it yeah, your mind, yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm feeling similarly. Like, I I want to challenge myself to do something that I wouldn't, like, do innately. Just, like, drawing how I draw in my free time. Right. Um, I really want to do something long form, um, which seems like another challenge. So. Terrific. That's awesome. Laura? Um... And then you just you just published a book, so I don't mean to be rushing into your next book. Can I tell two really quick two D cloud stories that I love? Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Maggie Umber, by the way. Yeah. Um, long time two D cloud, extra hard worker, and here's incredible her. person, fucking incredible artist. There's her um, her recent book, which is just utterly gorgeous. Just a monster, really. Yeah. Um, when I met. Maggie um, uh, at Cake. She uh, someone bought a book and she she had the bills in her hand and it was like a fifty and a twenty and a five and she was looking at them and she was turned to me and she was like, "Is this seventy five? And I was like, "Yeah, don't you do the books for Tutti Cloud?" <laughs> And she was like, yeah, isn't that terrifying for you? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Meg. <laughs> um, and also when I met Rain, um, like, I don't know when, I was asking about all the kickstarts and all the shit and all the, um, and I was like, that must be making your life shorter, all the stress. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to die earlier. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> that's, a, that's what you want in a publisher, though, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Willingness to die. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, um, oh. um, I, I don't know. You know, 
know, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think I'm just going to keep drawing and not really think about it. Um, like everyone else, I want to push myself to do things that, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe to make comics that, like, I can show my parents, you know, without feeling embarrassed um, or ashamed of myself. That, that would be a good goal, you know? Yeah. Don't be proud of all of it. I hope so. <laughs> How about you, Rain? What's the, what's the next 10 years look like? Um, I, I think just like trying to turn this into a sustainable vehicle and a sustainable industry um, and just to survive. So you don't, you, you don't want to die young after all. Oh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but like, it, it's... <laughs> 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 I mean, we'll see. Well, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just, uh, uh, I think the next ten years, it'll just. I think things we're gonna figure things out a little bit better and uh, um, continue to. I mean, I don't know. It's like each time we like accomplish something, it's just like, well, this gives us more like uh, of an idea on how we can do other things and to continue to push ourselves and like uh, to continue to be like really uh, unwisely ambitious. Well, I, speaking speaking on behalf of of the the comics community, I am we are intensely grateful for your unwise ambition and for the space that is made in all of your work for other people to um, be ambitious and unwise and and tell beautiful and honest stories. So thank you guys. Thank you all. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you.